part 5 and we're on John 14. Set your troubled hearts at rest. Trust in God always. Trust also in me. There are many dwelling places in my Father's house. If it were not so, I should have told you. For I am going there on a purpose to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I shall come again and receive you to myself, so that where I am you may also be. And my way there is known to you. And my way there is known to you. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Yeshua replied, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Again, he is channeling there. If you knew me, you would know my Father too. From now on, from now on you do know him. You have seen him, Philip said to him. Lord, show us the Father, and we ask no more. Yeshua answered, Have I been all this time with you, Philip? and you still do not know me. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So this, you know, this is very confusing for people, isn't it? So, unless you're there, like, because now he's glorified. He is glorified now. So he's said time and time again, he can't do anything without the authority of the Father. He's doing the will of the Father. So basically he's saying, you know, you've been with me, you've felt the presence around me. This is the Father. You've seen him. You know. Then how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? I am not myself the source of the words I speak to you. So he's making it clear he is channeling. That's as clear as day. It is the Father who dwells in me doing his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else accept the evidence of the deeds themselves. In truth, in very truth, I tell you, he who has faith in me will do what I am doing. <clears throat> he who has faith in me will do what I am doing. What's he doing? He's channeling the Father. He's being at one with God. He's And he will do greater things still because I am going to the Father. Indeed, anything you ask in my name I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Well, yeah, that's a bit unclear there about what name we're talking about. <clears throat> See, I think then they, they knew about this name because they'd been using it. They'd been using this new name that they hadn't known before. That they didn't have a letter for in their language they realised it had power in it. And I was just there, he's basically speaking as the Father now. He said, my name. Speaking as the Father. If you love me, you will obey my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another to be your advocate, who will be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot receive him, because the world neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he dwells with you and is in you. This is the truth. This is what we go back to in the beginning, John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, the word dwelt with God. The truth dwelt with God. Here it just says, the spirit of truth, the world cannot receive him because the world neither sees nor knows him. They don't know the truth. The truth of things that it actually is. But do you know him because he dwells with you? They've had the truth, they've had that feeling in it, in them, and is in you. I will not leave you bereft. I am coming back to you in a little while. The world will see me no longer. But you will see me, because I live. You too will live. 
Then you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. The man who has received my commands and obeys them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and disclose myself to him. Again, that sounds like the one love. Judas asked him, the other Judas, not Iscariot, Lord, what can have happened that you mean to disclose yourself to us alone and not to the world? Yeshua replied, Anyone who loves me will heed what I say, then my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Let's say that again. Yeshua replied, Anyone who loves me will heed what I say. Things like love your enemy, I guess, yeah. Then my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. But he who does not love me does not heed what I say, and the word you hear is not mine. It is the word of the Father who sent me. I have told you all this while I am still here with you, but your Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will call to mind all that I have told you. <coughs> so we're introducing a new thing, and this is Yeshua's words. So he said, I'm not going to leave you bereft. I'm going to send you an advocate. And this advocate, they're calling the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. So is this a, a new thing that didn't exist in the world before, that no one had known the truth of things before. Um, perhaps, you know, Enoch was shown, shown things when he had questions, but did he sort of understand it all? Probably not. So here we have for the first time <clears throat> someone on earth who understands the truth and then this spirit of truth is now accessible. But your advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will call to mind all that I have told you. Peace is my parting gift to you, my own peace, such as the world cannot give. Set your troubled hearts at rest and banish your fears. You heard me say I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would have been glad to hear that I was going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now, beforehand, so that when it happens you may have faith. I shall not talk much longer with you, for the prince of this world approaches. He has no rights over me, but the world must be shown that I love the Father and do exactly as he commands. So up, let us go forward. The prince of this world then, maybe that's the devil. I am the real vine and my father is the gardener. Every barren branch of mine he cuts away, and every fruiting branch he cleans to make it more fruitful still. You have already been cleansed by the word that I spoke to you. Dwell in me as I in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, but only if it remains untied with the vine. Only if it remains united with the vine. No more can you bear fruit unless you remain united with me. I have been thinking a lot lately how in order to create love it's always created between two between a relationship um, you can create love with a relationship with God with uh, and with other people but in a sense entirely on your own you can't really create any love I don't think anyway I am the vine, 
and you the branches. He who dwells in me, as I dwell in him, bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. He who does not dwell in me is thrown away, like withered branch. The withered branches are heaped together, thrown on the fire and burnt. Again, it sounds very much like the one love, like we're the, the, the eternal tree, you know, we're members of that eternal tree. So we're like a little new bud on the eternal tree of life. We are members of it. And our mother and father, God, is a branch further up. But the way love has designed it, you know, no souls are going to get burnt. Like, they don't create an eternal soul and train it for four billion years just to discard it. You know, it's all, that's, the design is perfect. If you dwell in me and my words dwell in you, ask what you will and you shall have it. This is my Father's glory, that you may bear fruit in plenty and so be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Dwell in my love. If you heed my commands, you will dwell in my love, as I have heeded my Father's commands and dwell in his love. I have spoken thus to you, so that my joy may be in you, and your joy complete. This is my commandment, love one another, as I have loved you. There is no greater love than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, I call you servants no longer. A servant does not know what his master is about. I have called you friends because I have disclosed to you everything that I heard from my Father. You did not choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that shall last, so that the Father may give you all that you ask in my name. This is my commandment to you, love one another. If the world hates you, it hated me first, as you know well. If you belong to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, because I have chosen you out of the world, for that reason the world hates you. Remember what I said, a servant is not greater than his master. As they persecuted me, they will persecute you. They will follow your teaching as little as they have followed mine. It is on my account that they will treat you thus, because they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father. If I had not worked among them and accomplished what no other man has done, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. However, this text in their law has come true. They hated me without reason. But when your advocate has come, whom I will send you from the father... The Spirit of Truth that issues from the Father, he will bear witness to me, and you also are my witnesses, because you have been with me from the first. I have told you all this to guard you against the breakdown of your faith. They will ban you from the synagogue. Indeed, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will suppose that he is performing a religious duty. They will do these things because they do not know either the Father or me. I have told you all this so that when the time comes for it to happen, you may remember my warning. I did not tell you this at first, because then I was with you, but now I am going away to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Yet you are plunged into grief because of what I have told you. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am leaving you. If I do not go, your advocate will not come. Whereas if I go, I will send him to you. That's interesting. Okay. Well. Needs thinking about. Whereas if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will confute the world and show where wrong and right and judgment lie. He will convict them of wrong by their refusal to believe in me. He will convince them that right is on my side. 
by showing that I go to the Father when I pass from your sight. And he will convince them of divine judgment by showing that the prince of this world stands condemned. There is still much that I could say to you, but the burden would be too great for you now. However, when he comes who is in spirit of truth, he will guide you all into the truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but he will tell you only what he hears, and he will make known to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me, for everything that he makes known to you he will draw from what is mine. All that the Father has is mine, and all that, and all that is why I said, everything that he makes known to you he will draw from what is mine. A little while, and you will see me no more. Again in a little while, and you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by this? A little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me. And by this, because I am going to my father. So they asked, What is this little while that he speaks of? We do not know what he means. Yeshua knew what they were wanting to question him, and said, are you discussing what I said? A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me. In very truth I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will be glad. But though you will be plunged in grief, your grief will be turned to joy. A woman in labour is in pain because her time has come. But when the child is born, she forgets the anguish in her joy that a man has been born into the world. So it is with you. For the moment you are sad at heart, but I shall see you again, and then you will be joyful, and no one shall rob you of your joy. When that day comes, you will ask nothing of me. In very truth, I tell you, if you ask the Father for anything in my name, he will give it to you. So far you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be complete." Till now I have been using figures of speech. A time is coming when I shall no longer use figures, but tell you of the Father in plain words. When that day comes, you will make your request in my name, and I do not say that I shall pray to the Father for you, for the Father loves you himself, because you have loved me and believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world. Now I am leaving the world again and going to the Father. His disciples said, Why is this plain speaking? This is no figure of speech. We are certain now that you know everything and do not need to be questioned. Because of this we believe that you have come from God. Yeshua answered, Do you, know, do you now believe? Look, the hour is coming, has indeed already come, when you are all to be scattered, each to his home, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have told you all this, so that in me you may find peace in the world and you will have trouble. But courage, the victory is mine, I have conquered the world. How long is John? 21. Okay, break.